Good evening and welcome to the Fort Clinton City Council meeting for October 22nd, 2019. Please join me in rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, the Lord's Prayer, and a brief moment of silence for men and women serving our country overseas. has been received from the clerk regarding compliance with the rules and notification of the calling of this meeting. We have no guest presentation this evening. Uh, we'll move to the public comment. I understand there's two individuals. Mrs. Sardi. Marie S. Griffin, 117 Driftwood Drive, Brooklyn, Ohio. Mrs. Whipple. Yes. And given the problems, actually private property just like the shores condominium development or the village of water's edge home development the city doesn't go on their property either uh, they read one meter for that facility they pick up leaves at the curb just like they do with the fountains the streets in that facility are private we've made arrangements to pick up brush on state street you simply have to take it to, to that section That, that was a conversation. I'll double check, but I believe that was a conversation Mr. Martin had. I'm sorry, he's not here tonight. Okay. But you still want our, anybody that's working, you still want city tax on Your city residents, just like our, the folks that live at the shores and the waterfront. But it's a private section, you don't own any Ma'am, I understand it's a homeowners association, just like some of the condo developments. So, residents and even temporary um, visitors who uh, just stick with the residents, you're brought up who's paying taxes. You are still getting city services, not the curbside services that you were describing, because as Mr. Snyder said, there's um, arrangements with those private homeowners associations, just like uh, probably in Catawba there are for a beef pickup if you're in a particular subdivision. So that's the difference. You still get uh, 
city services, which is what the income tax is for, for example. It's a special, uh, unique situation. The city doesn't own all the other private property either, but they do own the uh, right-of-ways on long main thoroughfares and other private streets. So, um, the difference between a privately owned street and a publicly owned street, I guess. I hope that's helpful. Mrs. Sorry. Jerry Chuoling, 647 Harrison, Portland. Yeah, I have a couple of questions. First, <coughs> we had that oil alert uh, a few months back, and it brought to my attention Saturday about notification that we worked anything out other than Facebook or how to notify the local citizens. Mr. Barton has been working on a variety of ways to get a hold of people. Again, and I can't speak to the details. Right, right. Uh, there was a uh, action plan that was put in place prior to that oil alert. It was revised um, after that event because obviously there were some some issues there. Um, it's never happened before that I know of. In the I'll get the forces. I'll get the information to you. Okay, there's going to be glitches. And also, uh, <laughs> there's also brought to my attention that some new B and B's opened up on Madison Street, um, right next door to residents and they're having some issues with them. Are there ordinance set rules, laws governing the BMDs in the city? <coughs> there are some ordinances on the books that deal with bed revenues. Okay. All right. Bed taxes, sales taxes and such. Okay. I'll let them know. Thank you. Mr. Snyder, the mayor's report. Thank you, Mr. President Pro Tem. I'm actually pulling double duty as Mr. Martin is out of town, so if you'll allow me, this is kind of a, a dual report. I will be as brief as possible. Uh, Mr. Martin is out of town. He is attending a Great Lakes collaboration event. Uh, the folks that, that live on the <coughs> islands, not only here in Lake Erie, but all of the, the Great Lakes, realize that uh, their livelihood depends on their sister port cities, Port Clinton being one of those for many of the Lake Erie Islands. So this is a, a group of, of folks that have lived that live on the various islands throughout the Great Lakes that have been asked to meet with representatives from their mainland sister cities. So Mr. Martin is spending a, a couple days at that meeting, getting to know uh, their needs and how we can better work together to to work together um, on, on a variety of things. Area events that I, that I attended and, and took part in and, and whatnot. Many of you may have seen these signs go up around town, the Main Street Outdoor Refreshment Area. Uh, this is a project that Main Street brought to the city. Uh, Main Street had been working on it for about two years. It was adopted by council and actually went into place last Friday afternoon at noon. Um, it will run seven days a week from noon until midnight. Uh, the rules and instructions on how it operates are in every uh, participating establishment in downtown Port Clinton. Um, there were about 25, 30 people that attended the, the opening event Saturday, or excuse me, Friday at noon. And uh, just about every time I go through downtown, I see someone uh, walking through our streets participating in that, that event. So I think that's going to be a, a benefit. I know every time I went into an establishment for lunch downtown, uh, folks are asking, when's it going to start? When's it going to start? When's it going to start? So if you haven't, stop downtown and participate. This last Saturday, I had an opportunity to participate in the uh, Joyful Connections Family Frenzy. The Port Clinton Fire Department had a team very similar in atmosphere to, uh, to a family feud type event, although it was uh, a lot of fun and a lot of laughs. The fire department team did not do that well. Um, there are some pictures out there that, uh, that are absolutely hilarious of, of the event. Uh, six different organizations participated, raised a lot of money for that worthwhile charity. Uh, several of us, I saw several faces at the Rotary Pizza Challenge. I was honored to be one of the celebrity judges, uh, along with five or six other folks. We judged the specialty pizzas, and since it's after 7.30, I can announce uh, high school kids from Port Clinton and Danbury judged the best pepperoni pizza, and that winner was uh, Sloopy's. And then the adults, uh, celebrity judges, uh, judged the best um, specialty pizza, and that also award went to Sloopy's for their uh, Korean barbecue pizza, which was absolutely spectacular. Um, I don't know the the uh, People's Choice Award, they haven't sent me a text yet, so I can't mm -hmm. announce that one. Um, 
this Saturday, there's a lot going on in the community this coming Saturday the 26th. It's National Drug Take Back Day. Uh, any old prescriptions, you can drop them off Saturday at the Port Clinton Police Station. Actually, you can drop them off at any time at the Port Clinton Police Station. In the lobby, there's a, a large mailbox. Uh, it looks like a mailbox. You can drop your prescriptions off in there. Uh, again, Saturday, National Drug Take Back Day. It's also Make a Difference Day uh, throughout the United States. Drew Kopchek, who is a recent graduate of Port Clinton High School, he's now going to Case Western Reserve, called the city and is organizing a citywide cleanup or a city cleanup in downtown. He's asking folks to meet at 9 a.m. at the Blue Canopy on Jefferson Street. Uh, they'll walk the streets in downtown in the alleys and along the Jefferson Street Pier. So if you're available at 9 a.m. on the excuse me on the 26th to help him out. Also on the 26th is a citywide cleanup at the high ground at Waterworks Park. That will run from 8 in the morning until 3 in the afternoon. Items that are prohibited are TVs, hazardous waste, surprisingly enough, uh, paint, computers, tires, and construction materials like roof shingles and whatnot. And you must be a city resident to partake in that, that event. IDs will be checked. Saturday, Main Street Port Clinton has several activities going on in downtown Port Clinton. And because of that, the 100 block of South Madison Street will be blocked off from 6 a.m. until 3 p.m. Uh, for activities such as the Kids Trick or Treat event, which will run from 1 until 3, and then the Bigger Kids Pub Crawl from 7 until midnight in downtown Port Clinton. At the Port Clinton High School, the Spooktacular, again, kids dressed up in their Halloween costumes, that will be on the 29th of October from 6 until 7.30, the Spooktacular at Port Clinton High School. And then, of course, Trick or Treat throughout the streets of Port Clinton will be on the 31st from 6 to 8 p.m. This coming Thursday evening uh, is the, what I believe will be the final infrastructure, citywide infrastructure plan discussion, 6 p.m. at the Ottawa County Family Advocacy Center, which is at 507, excuse me, 570 McKinley. Uh, that is a, the old church on McKinley Street, right where McKinley and Kentucky meet, just north of the old Port Clinton Glass offices. Reminder that on November 3rd, fall back, it's that time of year when it gets dark at 4.30 in the afternoon. Council in front of you, you'll see uh, information on the Port Clinton Fire Department Firefighters Association Feather Party. That takes place on November 9th at 6 p.m. at the Port Clinton Fire Station. Free event to everyone. There are some raffle tickets and several of us in this room have those tickets to, to sell if you're interested. Dollar each, six for $5. It's a free family event. All the proceeds from that go back to the Firefighters Association and then turn those into items that, that the fire department uses on a daily basis to, to meet the needs of the citizens. Some of the projects that are underway in the community right now, uh, you'll see along Jefferson Street in, in conjunction with the ongoing revitalization of the uh, North 100 and South 1 and 200 blocks, there's some tree removal going on. Uh, the docks on Jefferson Street will be coming out November 4th, <laughs> weather permitting. Uh, the city park restrooms, Lakeview Park restrooms, they have been winterized for the season. Stump removal has been ongoing for the past week or so and will continue. There's uh, plus or minus 30 stumps from trees that have been removed throughout the city. Crack sealing along the streets. Uh, right now they're down to just the final few streets, Perry, uh, Lakeshore. Uh, that's been going on for the past two weeks and will continue. Uh, the target date right now for completion is November 4th. Again, weather permitting. So as you come across those crews, be mindful there is a police uh, cruiser out there to help with directing traffic. Immediately following the, the crack sealing project, leaf pickup will begin throughout the city. Again, the target date on that is November 4th, depending on the weather for the, the crack sealing project. So November 4th throughout the city, the leaf pickup will begin. Thanks to the generous donation of uh, Mike and, and Deborah, I'm gonna butcher this last name, Hennekin, from Danbury Township, the city of Port Clinton will have a beautiful Christmas tree to be placed along uh, Madison and Perry this year. I think it's a blue spruce. I'll pass this picture around the, uh, the goofy looking character and there's my father acting as a uh, scale for scale. We're guesstimating it's about 25, 30 feet high. Beautiful tree down there. Uh, the, the target is to have that in place and lit by the sip and shop which is the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So that's, that's the, the goal there. Uh, wetlands restoration after years and years and years of waiting uh, they're going to begin staging uh, sometime next week. So that will mean that there'll be limited access
to North Washington Street um, while that staging process begins. They will be here uh, early next week to do a, a final mowing and chemical treatment of the, the marshland, and then they'll start to bring in the, the larger equipment to get that, that really going. On some very positive news, earlier today, Mr. Martin received an email from the Ohio EMA. We had submitted a, an initial grant pro proposal for a flood wall project that we're looking to help with some, some flood mitigation. That flood wall will run from basically the, the Jet Express or the drawbridge east to the curve right by the, the, the big blue canopy. And then it would connect with the, the walkway that's set to go in next spring. Again, we passed the preliminary application process. The, there's a great deal yet to accompl be accomplished uh, to, to get those, those necessary funds. We're gonna be having a meeting with the, uh, the property owners in that area to gauge their interest and their participation. So that, that's some positive stuff that's, that's come up. Um, in sports, and it really says in sports, um, November 1st is the annual Port Clinton Oak Harbor football game. And this will be the 77th year for that event. There's been some gaps in there. But overall, uh, Oak Harbor leads the series 45, 26, and 5. Um, I have a gentleman's wager with uh, Quentin Babcock, the mayor of, of Oak Harbor. When the Redskins win, that following Monday, Mr. Babcock will be dressed in red and white and come to Port Clinton High School to feed the seniors on the football team and the coaches uh, a pizza. And should the unthinkable happen and Oak Harbor wins, I've got to do the same thing that, uh, that, Monday, that following Monday night in the village of Oak Harbor. And I want to thank uh, Domel's Pizza for, for helping me out with uh, a great price on, on some pizzas should, should Oak Harbor be victorious in that, in that great iron matchup. And then finally, because it's a big game, Go Bucks beat the Badgers. Uh, with that in the record, please. <coughs> with that, that concludes both the Mayor and Safety Service Director. <coughs> thank you. Auditor's report, Mr. Hatfield. Nothing tonight, Mr. President. Thank you, Treasurer's report, Mrs. Hanson. I imagine you know I have something to yes. say. Uh, money has been coming in. We're now up to $162,996.20. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mrs. Hanson. Letter to support Mr. Wilbur. <coughs> Thank you. No safety service director, no police chief, no fire chief, no correspondence. Moving to ordinances. Third reading of ordinances and resolutions. Mrs. Sarri, you please read by title and summary only ordinance 2519. Ordinance 25-19, an ordinance authorizing and directing the director of safety and service to advertise for bids and enter into contracts for the reconstruction and improvement of Jefferson Street from East 3rd Street through Perry Street, North Jefferson, and declaring an emergency. Thank you, Council. Do you wish to take any action on Ordinance 2519? Mr. President, Mr. Mrs. Sarkin. I move that we retain the emergency clause as to Ordinance 2519. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. Thank you, Mrs. Hickman. Discussion on the motion. Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Dave Bilo? Yes. Beth Gilman? Yes. <coughs> Jose Hickman? Yes. Brian Phil? Absent. Margaret Phillips? Yes. Lisa Sardi? Yes. Thank you. With 5-4 and 0 against, the motion carries. Emergency clause is retained. Council, do you wish to take any further action on Ordinance 2519? Mr. President, Mrs. Sardi? I move that we adopt Ordinance 2519. Motion on the floor. Is there a second? Is there a second? I second. Thank you, Mrs. Gilman. Discussion on the motion. Mrs. Sarkin. Um, this was discussed at the uh, last infrastructure meeting on October 1st, and a motion was made by Mr. Bilo, seconded by Mr. Friedman, to um, urge council to pass this ordinance. I recall that. Thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll on the motion? Kate Bielow? Yes. Don Friedman? Absent. Yes. Rosa Hickman? Yes. Brian Hill? Absent. Margaret Phillips? Yes. This is already. Carries on Ordinance 2519 is approved. Thank you, Council. 
No other ordinances and resolutions tonight. Moving to business from the floor. Mrs. Sardi. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Sardi. Mrs. Hickman. Nothing this evening. Thank you, Mrs. Hickman. Ms. Phillips. Nothing. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Ms. Phillips. Mrs. Gilman. Nothing tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Gilman. Anyone else in the audience have anything before we adjourn for the evening? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? Ms. Phillips. I move this August body adjourn. Motion is there a second? Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Sardi. All those in favor say aye. 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 All in favor, we are adjourned. Thank you.